One night in October, Gesualdo told his wife he was going out hunting. A legend says he was hiding. He waited for the lover to come around. At the right moment, he quietly crept up to her room and killed them both in bed. But soon, the sense of guilt tormented Gesualdo. It is said he became a recluse in his castle, and slowly went mad. Then Gesualdo began to compose some of the most haunting and beautiful music to come out of my country. Face it, Caserta today is not the kind of place you would want to spend the rest of your life. And yet, it's in this little southern town that lies the greatest palace in all Italy. This enormous palace was begun in 1752 by the ruler of southern Italy, the king of Naples, Carlo di Borbone. He wanted a palace befitting the new kingdom he had created. Allora, ragazzi, se per favore vi raggruppate da questa parte, potete vedere la scalinata dove è stato girato l'ultimo Guerre Stellari. Invece da questa parte. It feels a little obscene. The south of Italy was one of the poorest areas in Europe. Still a medieval and feudal society. The palace stretches over 44,000 square meters. It has 1,200 rooms an observatory, a chapel, 34 staircases, and over 1,700 windows. The throne room wasn't completed until 1847, almost 100 years after Carlo began this palace. The current Bourbon king didn't have so much time to enjoy it. The Bourbons were so concerned with looking grand that they hadn't noticed the revolution growing in their kingdom. Only 13 years later, the revolutionary patriot, Giuseppe Garibaldi, 
swept through the south of Italy with his army. The Bourbon dynasty was brought crashing down. But at the very heart of this immense royal building lies something small and intimate and wonderful. This is un piccolo teatro, a jewel box theatre, my favorite. It was completed in 1769 for King Ferdinando and has been used for opera ever since. Lake Averno. It sits in a great volcanic crater, one of the 40 volcanoes in the area known as Campi Flegrei, the Fleming Fields. Nowhere else in the world are you so aware of going through a legendary landscape. According to the Romans, this lake was the entrance to the underworld. Next to the lake is the only active crater, Solfatara. For centuries, Solfatara has been famous for its steaming jets of sulfurous vapors. Even today, it's a dangerous place to explore. Oh, it's warm and stinky. The whole area is closely watched by scientists and volcanologists because of the frequency of earthquakes which make the ground level rise and fall from year to year. Nobody can tell when the next one is going to happen. In Roman times, this was believed to be the home of Vulcan, the god of fire. Today it is home to the Angarano family, which has lived here since the 19th century. Ciao, come Buongiorno, stai? Buongiorno, grazie. <ride> grazie di avermi accolto. Ma come fate a vivere qui? E, qui? E ci si siamo adattati da 150 anni che siamo qua. E come vivere un po' noi. sul bordo, sul eh, filo? Sul bordo, se capita, capita. Se non capita, non capita. Tanto nessuno sa veramente se capita. Questo è un fatto che non si sa. Quasi come da noi a Venezia, la grande Esattamente, inondazione. Esattamente, la grande inondazione verrà, non verrà. Chi lo sa? Vieni che ti faccio vedere tutta la, la zona come è costruita qua all'interno della sua fila. Questo veniva fatto, usato per fare i, i fanghi. Tipo fanghi sono, termali? Tipo fanghi termali, venivano fatti anche qui in famiglia. Fatti. <ride> tu lo facevi, lo fai? No, io no. Non lo faceva <ride> mio nonno, che, però con scarsi risultati. <ride> Come mai? Insomma, I dolori restavano, <ride> dei reumatismi, eccetera. Però in compenso era più nervoso del solito. 
E voi dove vivete qua? Sì, noi siamo, viviamo qua dentro, in quella casa lì, la casa di famiglia, diciamo così. E qui come temperature? Come... Qua siamo intorno, diciamo così, la temperatura del fango è sui 70-80 gradi. E quindi anche del suolo sottostante, vicino alla fumarola, intorno ai 180. Sembra quasi vuoto. Eh. <ride> L'acqua piovana tende a creare delle cavità sotterranee. E quindi potremmo anche sprofondare. Sì, di poco, ma si può anche sprofondare, per questo è recitato. C'è uno dei punti proprio in cui prendendo un, un sasso grande un, e buttandolo per terra si abbum. Si può che poi, eh, eh sì, volendo possiamo andare a provare se, se lo fa. Eh. Wow, ma non è che crolla tutto? No, una volta si è scomparso uno, ma insomma... <ride> and die they used to say but today even getting here alive is a remarkable thing Neapolitans are perhaps the worst drivers in the world you British may think it's too noisy probably even too dirty but once you get to the center you discover the jewel of the real Naples. If Roma is the heart of Italy, the Naples is its soul. Hey! <laughs> Hello! Ciao! Ciao! <laughs> The streets of Naples are always full of ritual. The people here are religious and superstitious. It was here, in the middle of the 18th century, in the Spaccanapoli quarter, that rumors spread of a mysterious prince. Some said he sold his soul to the devil for magical powers. And certainly, he had visions of the future which cannot be explained. It's easy to see how such rumors got around. Prince Raimondo was an unusual figure. For a start, as most Neapolitans, he was an inventor. He invented the first raincoat, a shotgun, an amphibious carriage, an eternal lamp. But I think his greatest creation was this chapel. In the 1750s, Prince Raimondo began decorating the family chapel. He called in the greatest sculptors of the day to work under his guidance. The result is a treasure house of Baroque sculpture. This monument, entitled Modesty, is dedicated to Raimondo's mother, who died at the age of 20. The broken tablet marks her premature death. <laughs> 